So Democratic presidential candidate Seth Moulton told a story of how he got PTSD from being in war. Um, but as you're about to see right here, the story is not what you think it is. So I thought when I first saw this, I was like, oh, this is, you know, hey, he's actually having a human moment. And uh, that's good because he seems like he's so overly coached and so careful and he's such a narcissist and a careerist that, you know, it's so see-through and obvious and transparent. So I was a little surprised when I saw this headline and I was like, okay, let me watch this and see what's up. This story is beyond disturbing. So at an event near his hometown, Moulton tried something new. He told a story he'd never shared before. To be honest, I have not had the courage before to talk about my own struggles with post-traumatic stress. And I'd like to tell a story about the ways that I've dealt with uh, post-traumatic stress by just sharing a story that I've, that I've never shared before. It happened on the, the second day of the, of the war. The Marines just ahead of us uh, shot up some cars and buses coming in the other direction because they thought they were full of insurgents. But not all of them were. And one of the cars was a family that was fleeing south. And as we came upon this car that had been essentially destroyed, I could see that the mother and father were clearly dead. But there was a, a little boy who had been thrown from the car to the middle of the road. And the boy was still alive. He was lying in the middle of the road, writhing in, writhing in pain. And I, as the platoon commander, made the right decision, which was to drive around him and press the attack. Because stopping to take care of him would have endangered the lives of my entire platoon. But it was one of the most painful decisions I've ever made in my life because there is nothing that I wanted more to do than to stop that vehicle and get out and to help this five-year-old boy. As a veteran, what does it mean to you to see someone who's running for president who openly says that? Him going out of his way to speak his truth and tell his story in the way that he did was to me not just eye-opening but inspiring because it's direly necessary and I admire him for really putting himself out there. And you know what? It worked. At least for one spin of the news cycle, Moulton broke through. The question is whether continuing to tell his story can make him relevant. Congressman, you talked tonight about some things at this town hall that you've never talked about before in public. How do you feel? I'm glad I did, um, because I think the reaction from the audience here made it clear that they appreciated it. But um, but it's tough, and it's a political risk, you know? So we'll see tomorrow um, what the consequences are. What do you mean when you say political risk? It's a long history of, uh, of uh, veterans or other um, people who have uh, dealt with mental health issues um, being really stigmatized. But, you know, there's a big part of me that doesn't really care because too many people in today's world are doing things for political reasons. And I mean, I did this for the exact opposite. The only reason I haven't shared it until this time is because I've been concerned about the political consequences. And um, you know what? Fuck it, it's the right thing to do. So I want you to think about the framing that he just laid out there for you. He says, let me tell you the story about how I got PTSD in war. And then he describes how basically U.S. soldiers killed some civilians. They thought they were insurgents. They ended up killing civilians, including a mother and father. And a five-year-old boy was laying on the ground in pain. I don't know if he was shot or something else, but he's laying on the ground in excruciating pain. And he made the decision not to help the five-year-old civilian boy but to drive around the five-year-old civilian boy so that they can go fight terrorists. The framing of his story was not, oh my God, 
that's when I realized war is a racket. What are we doing here? This is insanity. We're in a country that didn't attack us. We just killed civilians. We're ignoring a five-year-old boy. And I don't know. If, is this all worth it? Is this all necessary? Is this... Is this what happens to fight back after 9-11? That we have to kill civilians and invade a country that didn't attack us? And none of that was mentioned. The whole story is framed from, and as a result of this, I have emotional scars and I have PTSD. Now, I'm not, I just want to be clear, I'm not belittling or looking down on or brushing aside U.S. soldiers who have PTSD, because that's a silent killer. A lot of U.S. soldiers are killing themselves um, after having gone and fought in these wars. And so it's a serious problem, and I have sympathy. But the fact that he put front and center in that story his feelings over the deaths of civilians and a five-year-old boy who was left to die shows you something about his priorities and the kind of person he is. See, that's where somebody who's more open-minded, somebody who's more objective, somebody who's not a narcissist, that's where somebody like in that situation would have gone, oh my God, oh my God, what have I done? What have we done? We got to stop this war and we have to stop it now. And by the way, there are people like, you know, soldiers who have had that reaction. Um, Abby Martin's husband, Mike uh, Prisoner, Prisoner, Pri I don't know how to pronounce your name, Mike, I'm sorry. But he, um, he went to war and then he said he realized when he was there that in some instances, are we the baddies? Because it certainly doesn't feel like we're fighting on the side of justice right now. And he had like a, you know, an awakening in a way. Seth Moulton um, apparently saw firsthand the killing of civilians and including a five-year-old boy on the ground about to die, um, rolling all around in pain. Not only did he make the call to ignore it, but then he framed it afterwards as, man, this really gave me some emotional scars. What it should have done is it should have lit a fire under your, under your ass to say, we got to get the fuck out of these wars, man. Because those people just died for what? For nothing. For nothing. For absolutely nothing they died. Their country didn't attack us. I, you know, the thing that frustrates me and bothers me the most is, I think it was a political calculation on his part. He wasn't just, he wasn't just like, oh, here, I'll tell this story. No, he thought about it quite a bit, and he thinks, hey, this might give me a spike in the polls, so I'll tell it. <sighs> that is dark, man. That is dark. Because if that's really how it went down, stop and think about it. He's going to tell the story of civilians dying in Iraq, and a five-year-old boy on the ground that he ignored. He's going to tell that story, not to make the point of the wars have to end, but to make the point of, and now I'm scarred by that. Well, I'm scarred by that story, and I'm scarred by you not coming to the conclusion, holy shit, let's end all these stupid wars.